All right, question 1.2. It's another uh, sort of visual pattern that we are looking at. And this is a classic question where uh, there's that saying that goes, there's many ways to skin a cat. And this is a type of question in maths where there's not one uh, necessarily more right way of, of answering this question. And you can use a number of approaches. I'm just going to show you the one that I personally favor, but um, you can answer this question in different ways. So first thing I'm going to do is just look at the actual visual pattern, count the matches just so I can see for myself the first pattern, there are four matches there, second one they're going to be the four, and then the three additional, well, I'll just kind of show you what I mean. I'm looking at those three additional ones from the original pattern, so that's four plus three is going to give me that pattern has seven, the next one's going to be the seven plus another three additional ones there, so 7 plus 3 is 10. And then I can sort of identify that with the table below. That That's all I'm looking at. The table below is just a way of numerically representing the visual pattern of matches. So we asked to complete the table. So hopefully you've picked up the pattern that each time you move on to the next pattern, you're just adding another three uh, matches each time onto the edge of the pattern. So basically, as we move along, we're going in sort of multiples of three. So we're adding three each time. And that makes it fairly easy to work out the next number in the pattern because it's the matchstick pattern number four. I just need to add another three, so that means that that'll be 13. But then it immediately jumps to matchstick pattern number 20. So we've been going nicely along the top here, just one, two, three, four. We just need to add three matches each time. But then suddenly we jump to 20. Now that's a jump of 16 uh, matchstick patterns. But luckily I know the general pattern is a multiple of 3. So all I actually need to do is take um, 16 multiply it by 3. Um, hopefully you can sort of do that to just maybe work out, work it out on the side. I'm just going to do it on the side over here. 16 times 3. Um, it's 18. Carry the 1. So that's 48. So basically to get from here to here, I'm actually adding 48 because I'm doing I'm going up 16 patterns. Um, so then I just need to add 48 to 13, um, and then 48 to 13 is going to be 61. Okay, and then here comes the definitely one of the trickier questions you get in this section of maths is where we're actually given now the number of matches. Um, and we have to work out which matchstick pattern. So we're basically working in reverse. Now, the way I would do this, I would actually answer the next question first. I'd find the formula and then use that. But if you don't have the formula, what you do know is that our starting point is 4. So what I'm going to do, and I actually don't really have any space to show you this. Um, let me just make a little bit of space up at the top here. Um, Working backwards, I'm going to take the 121, and I know that the first pattern is 4, so I'm going to actually subtract 4 from, from 121, which will give me 117. And I know from there, I should, it should, 117 should be divisible by 3, because it's going in multiples of 3 each time from your starting point of 4. So I then take 117, I divide it by, divide that by 3, and that will give me 3, carry the 2, 3 goes into 27, 9 times. So that's going to give me 39. If I had to times 117, uh, uh, sorry, 3 times 39 would give me 117. But I've got to remember that it's the first pattern is the 4, so I, I then need to add an additional number to the 39. So this will effectively be the 40th um, matchstick pattern. Um, and then I'm going to take you to the formula and we'll show, see that this actually does work. So basically, we want to find out, usually our goal is to find out the number of matches. So we say that is represented, and it's highlighted in bold here, in. 
Um, so we say n is equal to, and there is some link between the number of matchsticks and the matchstick pattern number. So there is a link between these two, what we call variables, because they vary. You see the matchstick pattern changes. It goes one, two, three, four. We can have any matchstick pattern we want. And based on that, we want to know how many matches there are. So those two things vary um, together. So there's a link between them. Now, the most obvious link we've already identified is this multiple of 3. So mathematically, I know that there is some kind of link where it's a multiple of 3. But now, if I had to use substitution, and I just take the first example where there's matchstick pattern number 1, and there are four matches. If I substitute matchstick pattern, which is number one, is t. So if I put a t, t is equal to one, one times three, one times three is three. However, it's telling me that it should be four. So then mathematically, what I have to do to adjust for that is I just have to add one. Okay, and the beauty of, of a general rule is it works for every single case of the pattern. So let's just test it out randomly on... Maybe let's say the third one. So when we've got matchstick pattern 3, so t is 3, so we make t 3 over here. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. So n is 10. And when t is 3, n is 10. So this is now a general rule that works for all of them. So we can actually go and test the ones that we've done. Um, so for example, when t was... 20, 20 times 3, 20 times 3 is 60, 60 plus 1 is 61, and it works perfectly. Right, on to the final one, just to double check that we're right, 40 times 3, 4 times 3 is 12, so it's 120, 120 plus 1 is 121, n is 121, and we've done it.